The long walk home. Migrant workers returning to homes in the quake zone. A sad, silent procession. On the way, we meet Xian Guangxian, who's been traveling for three days, walking the final stage because he has no alternative. It's hard to get a lift on a motorbike. There are not a lot of people with good hearts, and it's expensive to pay for a ride. Unless you're part of the emergency services, the only way into the quake zone is by motorcycle or on foot. The returnees have come back to a village where 70% of the homes have been destroyed. Some have lost loved ones. But Xiong has been fortunate. Under the shade of a tree, a reunion with his wife and son. Savoring what he thought he'd lost. He's brought gifts, new shoes and clothes. Necessities now. And then it's time to see for himself what happened to his home. Walking through his old neighborhood, he's lost in his own thoughts. Nothing's the same. I felt really sad. I was devastated when I first saw this. I almost burst into tears. He knew his house had been destroyed, but nothing prepared him for this. The home he remembered, gone. We still owe a lot of debts from buying this house. It's really heartbreaking to see it like this. In the rubble, he recognizes familiar and mundane objects. Shun Wen Xian borrowed $13,000 from relatives three years ago to buy this house. Now he's had to give up his factory job until he can get his family resettled. So for now, he's a man without a home or an income. But he walks away to what he does have left, a wife, child, and the hope he'll one day regain what he's lost. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, in Longtushan, southwest China.